Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. Today we're talking about orbital diagrams. We're gonna talk about several different things. The first one is Oppos principle. It says that electrons will first occupy orbitals of the lowest energy level. Electrons will fill an orbital with the same spin number until the orbital is filled before it will begin to fill with the opposite spin number. And Oppo is not a person, you guys. It's actually just a German word and it means construction. This may be confusing to you. Let me explain it further. So electrons do spin, right? They're like rotating. Um, so we do say that they either have an upward spin or a downward spin. And we are gonna represent electrons in orbital diagrams with arrows. So if you see that there's an arrow going up, or an arrow going down, that's a upward spin or a downward spin, okay? Uh, we're also gonna depict the pair of electrons in either a box or you can see it as an underline either way, but each one is gonna only hold two electrons or two arrows, okay? So this looks like a lot and it looks confusing, right? So these are the um, order in which we're going to add our electrons or arrows in this case, right? To our orbital diagrams for the P and D orbitals. Uh, I'm not showing you our S orbital because S orbital can only hold two electrons. Therefore, you're gonna have one arrow going up and one arrow going down for upward and a downward spin and that's it. So you don't really have to think a lot about that one. But we do have to start thinking about the order in which we're writing our arrows or drawing our arrows in these boxes or underlines when we're associating with the different orbitals. So first off, why do I have three boxes for the P orbital? It's because we can hold up to six electrons, two for each box, so therefore we have six. Same thing with the D um, orbital, we can hold up to 10 electrons, therefore we have five boxes or you can have five underlines, okay? So now in order to put the um, electrons in in the correct order, you are going to do the um, arrows pointing in the same direction. So this is upward and you're gonna start in the first box. If you're adding a second one, it's also gonna be upward, but now we're in the second box. And then the third one is gonna be upward in the third box. So every box must be filled with one arrow or one electron, right? first and going in the same direction. This happens to be up. You can start going down as well. It doesn't make any difference, but they have to be going in the same direction first. Then you're going to start filling them in um, in the opposite direction, starting back at the beginning, okay? So we just went all up. So now we're gonna start going down. And then the next one we would go down and then the next one we would go down until we filled our P block with all six electrons. Um, notice we're doing the exact same method over here in the D block. It's just five um, boxes that we now have to fill before we start going in the opposite spin, okay? And then there's Polly's principle, and Polly was, was a scientist, and he did say um, no two electrons in the same atom can have the identical value for all four of their quantum numbers. So in other words, what he's really trying to say is no more than two electrons can occupy the same orbital, which is what we're doing for the little box or the underline, right? And um, two electrons in the same orbital must have opposite spin. So one has to have an upward spin and one has to have a downward spin. They both can't be up and they both can't be down. So here's some examples and non-examples. This first one is a non-example. S1, up and down, that's correct. But S2 is not correct because they're both going up and we cannot have them in the same direction. This second row is a correct example. We have S1 going up, then down, and then S2 going up, then down, which is perfect. They're in opposite directions. And then here is a third one. It is a non-example, up and then down, and then both of them are down. We cannot have that either. They must be in an opposite direction. So if you want to, go ahead and pause this video and try to write the orbital diagrams of oxygen, fluorine, and neon, and then I'll come back and show you the answers. All right, are you guys ready to look at this? So let's first look at oxygen. Oxygen, we have two electrons in our 1s and two electrons in our 2s, and then in our 2p, we have four electrons. So in order to write this correctly, we need to go up, 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 and then down. So make sure you're writing your arrows in the right box 
and that they're going in the right direction. So let's look at fluorine. Fluorine, we just have one more electron. So our 1s and 2s should look the same, right? And um, in our 2p, we're gonna go up, 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 and then down, down, okay? So the last box should have one free um, electron that's not there yet, okay? And then neon should have all of them filled uh, because neon is number 10, so it has 10 electrons. In other words, 10 arrows are being drawn. So up, down, up, down, and then we would go up, 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 down, down, down to fill in our 2P6, all right? And then we have our HUDS rule, which is our last rule or principle that you have to know, and that is every orbital in a subshell is singly occupied with one electron before any one orbital is doubly occupied, and all electrons in singly occupied orbitals have the same spin. In other words, this is exactly what we've been doing. Um, we're only occupying each one with uh, one up and one down, so opposite spins, and each one gets one electron before they get a second one. So here are some examples and non-examples again. The first one, these are all great examples. S12, so up, then down. S, uh, 2S2, so up, then down. And then 2P3, well, we only have two electrons that need to be placed here, so we would do up, and then in the second box up. We're not gonna draw a down arrow yet. Everyone has to get one arrow before we go back and do a second arrow, okay? Um, this is a non-example. This is exactly what I was talking about. They got the 1s2 and the 2s2 correct, but instead of spacing it out to the second box in the same direction, they ended up doing the opposite direction in the first box, and that would be incorrect. This one, they, they ended up getting 1s2 and 2s2 correct. However, uh, when they went up, then they changed direction and went down. So you have to stay in the same direction for each one being filled in with the first electron in each box and then change to the opposite direction, okay? Um, so this would be a perfect example. You can do uh, 1s2 just like this, 2s2, and then they chose to do down, down, and that is absolutely fine as long as you're sticking with the same direction for the entire way and then going to the opposite direction. So if I was to continue this, I would put my next um, electron down and then I would go up, 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 okay? Okay, so I just wanted to make a quick note on what the shapes were for these orbital diagrams. You can see that our S orbital is really just like a sphere or circle. Um, the P, they usually draw it as like an infinity sign or like an eight. So remember that atoms are moving, right? So they can be written like this or on the side like an infinity sign. So just know that they can be turning or twisted. Um, and then the D orbital, you can see it kind of looks like bubbles, but when they draw it for a test or a quiz, you guys, they usually make it look like two infinity signs or two eights put together. And remember, it can end up looking like a T or like an X because the atom can move and shift. And then um, the F orbital kind of looks like a whole bunch of bubbles put together. Um, so it's kind of like the D blocks coming together and it's very three dimensional, kind of pops that at you a lot. So I just wanted to make note of this and let you guys see what they actually look like. I hope this video was helpful. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like it if you got something out of it, and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.